Warning. Censorship. Warning. Censorship. So joining me now from his home in the freest state in the union, and I bet the weather is wonderful there, is Alex Newman. He's the senior editor of The New American. He is also the founder of The Liberty Sentinel. He's got a new book out um, that we're going to talk about later. And Alex is also a contributor to the Epoch Times and probably a half a dozen other publications. Alex, thank you so much for joining me. Please give us an update about Florida, because I remember at the beginning of the pandemic, the mainstream media, they couldn't shut up about how Florida was mishandling the pandemic and that New York was doing such a great job on the pandemic. But this week, news is that maybe New York was much, much worse than even we already know that they were bad. Yeah, well, thank you for having me, Sheila. It's great to be with you again. And I'll tell you, I have never appreciated being a citizen of the great state of Florida more than I do right now. We are so blessed here. Uh, you know, we get visitors from California or other states and like, well, you, you can go to restaurants and, and you don't have to put a diaper on your face and you can go to <laughs> church and nobody's social distancing. Like, yeah, life goes on as normal here. Sounds and, great. You know, it's, <laughs> it, it's amazing. And, and you don't appreciate it until you start realizing that everybody else is losing their liberties. So uh, I can tell you it is uh, it's a great thing to be in Florida. We do have beautiful weather outside. It's sunny. It, it was a little chilly this morning. I, I know you guys in Canada are going to think this is hilarious, but it was like four degrees Celsius. And for me, that's a little chilly. But I went for a walk on the beach last night. And it's, it's just a wonderful place to be, Sheila. I think it's minus 25 here Celsius. So I don't know what that is it. In Fahrenheit, we have Trudeau's dad's uh, <laughs> way of measuring uh, temperature here. So I don't know what, what that translates to the rest of the world, but it is really, really cold. Um, Alex, I wanted to talk to you about some of the work that you're doing over at The New American. First thing um, I want to talk to you about is an interview that you did with a Venezuelan-born philosopher and law expert, Carlos Casanova. And... He wrote an article about how uh, COVID is really being used to crack down on civil liberties. And it's, I guess, as we're seeing so often, the vehicle for tyranny. Yeah, it was a fascinating interview. So this man was a philosophy of law professor in Venezuela. He's a Venezuelan by birth. And then when the totalitarians took over, he fled to Chile. Now he's a professor of philosophy of law at Catholic University in Santiago, the capital there. And uh, he teamed up with an American neurologist, and they wrote this phenomenal paper. It's now been translated into I don't know how many languages, uh, showing the medical component, the ethical component, the legal component, and showing that uh, the so-called cure for the coronavirus, really tyranny, is infinitely more dangerous and infinitely more harmful than the supposed problem that it's taken care of. And he ta they talk about the religious persecution, the, the health damage that these lockdowns are doing, the, the fact that so many people are not able to get medical care. So it was really interesting. And uh, of course, he's being censored for this. But I would really hope that people would go take a look at this, especially people who maybe have been watching too much television and they're convinced that we need tyranny to protect us from COVID. Go read this. Right? It's written by uh, one of the, the authors is a doctor. They know what they're talking about. They show their evidence. And, and I think at this point, it really should be clear that the cure, so-called, is far, far worse than the disease. You know, nobody really talks about that. The suicides due to, you know, extreme isolation um, and the, especially for men, economic crisis is a suicide trigger for men. But we're not supposed to talk about men's mental health because, you know, Ew, ew, icky, toxic masculinity. So the left tells me. And they don't also talk about the drug overdoses. Again, a lot of this stuff is triggered by loneliness. And, um, you know, we're, we're worried about, and, and I mean, every, every person who dies, that's, a, you know, an image bearer of the divine and their life is valuable. But what about everybody else? The, these uh, mental health issues that are being exacerbated by this forced isolation humans are social creatures and so to force us into isolation i mean it is severely damaging to us and i often wonder about little kids i mean if you're four or five years old you spent the last year separated from normal people which means your some of your earliest memories 
are having to wear a mask and being told not to hug your little friends. I think it's tragic. It is. And, and if you just look at the data component of it and you realize that these aren't just numbers, these are people's lives, you realize we are witnessing uh, the unfolding of a tragedy that is almost unprecedented in human history. If you look at the American numbers, 50 million people lost their jobs in the early part of the lockdown in the United States. That's about a third of our workforce. Imagine what that does to a family. Imagine what that does to the person who had the job. Uh, we've got hundreds of thousands of businesses now that are closed that will never reopen. Every one of those was a, a human being. These are people who invested their lives and their life savings and their time and, and, and everything for nothing, right? It, it's all been destroyed. And for what? So people could go shop at Walmart. So people could order from Amazon so that Jeff Bezos could double his net worth while he's using the Washington Post, which he bought up to promote this lockdown hysteria, to promote the demonization of people like my governor who refused to cave on this. Uh, it, it's so grotesque. You look at it just every category of data that you look at, you realize we're watching a horror story here. I just saw one yesterday. The, the murder rate across American cities has increased by 30 percent in just one year. There's, there's no modern precedent for this in all of human history. People are losing their minds, quite literally. People's families are crumbling. Uh, it's, it, children are being traumatized in a way that I think nobody could have imagined before this COVID. And then you multiply this tragedy by billions of people all over the world, and you realize the people responsible for this are criminals of the highest order, Sheila. Yeah, we've seen some numbers come out of Canada for hospitalizations and incidents of, like, infants who are turning up in emergency rooms with um, injuries related to child abuse, and that's that number has skyrocketed, um, and it's due to, you know, isolation, uh, segregation of families, and the fact that we're telling people don't come to the hospital because the hospitals are overwhelmed. And so, and kids are not in school. Well, where I am, kids are in school. But in a lot of places, kids aren't in school. So there isn't that mandated reporter, that teacher, that person who can see that the child is being abused at home. Yeah, and we need to realize too, Sheila, this is a means to an end. Uh, I believe the suffering that has been imposed on the people of the world, not just Canada, not just most of the American states, but Europe and Australia and I mean all over the world, we're seeing this tyranny. Uh, the suffering is not the end goal. This is a means to the end goal. And if you listen carefully, the totalitarians will tell you what that end goal is. They want people to be absolutely desperate for a return to normalcy. They want people to be willing to give up anything for a return to normalcy. And so now we see organizations like the World Economic Forum, led by Klaus Schwab, saying that, oh, by 2030, you will own nothing, okay? How are you gonna take all my property, right? I'm not gonna give you my property. Uh, they know that if people get desperate enough after a year of this craziness, people will be ready to do anything, to give up any freedoms, for even a return to a semblance of normalcy. So we need to realize there is an objective in mind. They're actually talking about the objective now. They refer to it as the Great Reset. We're going to build back better. This is the same language coming out of the United Nations, out of the British Prime Minister, out of the Canadian Prime Minister, out of Biden. Uh, this is a global worldwide effort to radically transform society, to completely undermine individual liberty, and to rebuild in a totalitarian fashion, very much along the lines of communist China. And we're seeing this now here, even in some of our freer states. Sheila, I'll give you an example. I was just interviewing a, an activist, and he was telling me about what's happening in Georgia now. They're putting up in some cities these, art, these cameras connected to an artificial intelligence system that will determine whether the slaves are violating COVID mandates. If they don't have their Sounds face like, diapers on if they're like closer than the, six feet that sounds just like the chinese social credit system it's exactly what it is sheila and this is happening now globally the social media the big tech companies are involved and it is absolutely an atrocity it must be resisted and it's going to get worse folks if we don't stand up and demand a return to our freedom and a return to sanity that's an excerpt from my weekly Wednesday night show, The Gun Show. Now, normally the full show is sitting 
behind a paywall, but we thought you'd like this clip. Now, on my show, I talk to interesting newsmakers, thinkers, and doers that are normally ignored, maligned, or completely attacked by the mainstream media. If you'd like to get access to my show, as well as other great TV-style shows too, like Ezra's Nightly, Ezra Levant Show, and David Menzies' Friday night show, Rebel Roundup, just go to rebelnews.com slash subscribe. That's rebelnews.com slash subscribe.